iFolks mirror surface finishes. We found a tool and we've got a recipe that has given us by far the most reflective or mirror-like surface finishes, which is really exciting. So, so let's show off the tool and the cuts, but then let's also talk about the science behind what's happening with a really good surface finish, because it's not just the cutting tool, it's the machine tool, it's the recipe, it's the coolant, it's the material, it's a whole stack of things. So this is really cool. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So like I mentioned, it's not just the cutting tool. And there's things in this video that we're not even going to get into, like harmonics and vibrations and the bricks of your coolant and having contaminants in your coolant. But nevertheless, the cutting tool is a major role. And this is the guy that we found. It's a YG1 Aluma Power card here to the page with all the specifics for this video. But here is what's exciting to me. Not only is this a beautiful tool that produces beautiful finishes, but you can buy it direct online. No distributors needed. And it's actually pretty inexpensive. This is a half inch carbide end mill under $40. So first up, just to give us kind of a baseline, let's use a regular end mill, let's machine a finish, and then let's take a look at what that finish is. It'll be a perfectly good finish, but it doesn't have that mirror-like reflection that we're looking for. To keep the comparison equal between the two tools, we're taking a skim pass at first to machine through the extrusion face. I wanna do that so that subsequent cuts on both this tool and the YG1 are apples to apples. The one thing in this test cut that's not apples to apples is the fact that the YG1 that we purchased is a half inch tool and the prior end mill that we used just as a sample was 3 eighths of an inch. Shouldn't actually be a big difference in what we're trying to do here, but nevertheless wanted to point that out. So again, there is nothing wrong with this finish or performance or recipe or cut whatsoever. One thing I will add, if, especially if you're watching this video and you're new to using either Tormach or lower power, lower horsepower, lower weight machines, is that I try to avoid large diameter tools. I find that usually I'll actually run quarter inch tools when possible. It's cheaper carbide and there's lower tool pressure because of that smaller diameter where it is worth stepping up to larger diameter tools is when you've got longer reaches. You wanna think about sort of four times your depth to tool diameter as being a safe zone. So for example, a quarter inch tool at four times depth would be a one inch depth of cut. So if your depth of cut is more than four times your tool diameter, that's when it's a lot more common to run into problems like chatter, bad surface finish, bad tolerance, and deflection. Okay, now let's try the YG1. So this is awesome. Look at the reflection in the part. And reflection is light. It's the way that light is reflecting off of it. And that's what gets me excited is to dive a little bit into the science of what's happening. If we put this part on our profilometer, profilometer is like a record player. It's gonna move a needle along and it's gonna measure the peaks in the valleys. Now, there's not necessarily a 100% correlation because Things with low RAs can still have a kind of a non-reflective surface, but it generally is the case that something that is reflective is going to have a low RA or roughness average because for that light to reflect back directly at you, you can't have big undulations or inconsistencies in it. We put our first cut on the Mitutoyu Surf Test 402. This is quite old, but it, we still have the calibration piece and that helps ensure that the unit is still working. I will note when I was digging into the specs, I believe this unit is plus or minus 10% on the RA. So take that for what it is. But I love using this thing. You've got a couple of different ways to adjust the angle and the height of the record player needle, if you will. And what you wanna do is bring it just in contact and the arrows on the screen will start to tell you when you're getting closer. And then you can use the blue digital knob, I assume it's like a potentiometer, to do the very fine adjust because it is very sensitive. And that will help bring you to a point where the two arrows are pointing at each other. Only when those two arrows are pointing can you push the red start stop button and it's gonna drag that needle across the part measuring those peaks and valleys. On our test cut piece, it's a 17 RA. Swap out 
measure our YG1 mirror reflective piece, it is a 9RA. I think that's a great example of showing a little insight into RA. Yes, 9 is a lot better than 17, but I would argue as a layman that the reflection of the piece is a more significant difference than that difference in an RA. As an example, the Saunders Machine Works fixture plates, depending on kind of where we are in the process or which style plate, we usually have them initially Blanchard ground to something like a 64RA or a 32RA. And that's what's tough. A 64RA on a Blanchard grind is gonna look different than a 64A on a surface grinder. And again, in this case, something that is reflective usually or may often have a lower RA, but there's a lot more to the science of both surface roughness average as well as this idea of reflection. This is only just a basic introduction to the concept. Nevertheless, it's cool to see that the same feed per tooth produced a lower RA, produced a better surface finish, and I suspect that has a lot to do with the edge grind and the margin and how it's probably doing some burnishing along that part. And that ties a lot into why it's difficult to get these mirror-like finishes is you've gotta have everything dialed in. And that's difficult when you step away from single flute tools into multi-flute tools. Because every time you add a cutting flute, you have to have uniformity and consistency between all of those edges in the grind and the current sharpness and how they wear and how they are ground in terms of their tolerance because changes in tolerance will not only affect the surface finish, but it's gonna affect the tool pressure and the deflection, which will also show up in how the finish looks. Here's the other super fun thing about this. Let's take a look at this part under our microscope. If you don't have a microscope, I highly encourage you pick up one, either for the $5 little mini loop thing, they've got cheap USB microscopes, or the one we're gonna use in this one, which is cool because it includes this little card that gives us a scaled measuring unit that we can take a look at to measure some features on this machined part. We've got our part underneath the microscope, we focus it in. By the way, fun fact, if you buy a microscope, get some extra cheap LED lights around it. You cannot have too much light when you're zoomed in on a part. But what's awesome is that the vertical marks that we see there are the scallop lines or the feed forward lines or the cut lines of our tool on this part, just zoomed in at a pretty incredible magnification. We get that glass scale laid over it, and I'll try my best to line up the first mark, the zero, with a feed forward line, and then take a look what happens. If we count over one, two, and then change, three, four, five, just, just shy of five, six, seven, eight, nine, just shy of 10. So this isn't perfect, I will readily admit that, but what we're looking at is starting to tie the physical reality of the cutting action back to our feeds and speeds. If we look at our feed per tooth infusion, it's one thousandth of an inch, or four thousandths of an inch should be slightly over 0.1 millimeter. The one here is 0.1 millimeter, so we are ever so slightly off, but something to the tune of millionths or tenths. And I think that's really cool to start to understand and reconcile that when we program a cutting tool, we program a feed rate, there really is a physical nature of how the tool is rotating as it's also being moved forward. The other thing you can see here, which is on my list to kind of investigate further, is we've got some erratic behavior just left of that zero. It could be a harmonic issue, it could be something in the machine tool, it could be in the holder. I wanna dive into that a little bit more. Hope you folks learned something, hope you enjoyed. It was super exciting for us, not only to find a good recipe that works, but again, with a tool that anybody can get their hands on and is actually really, really reasonably priced. Take care, see you soon.